Morning guys, how are we doing? Hope you're good, Wednesday morning. It's just starting to piss down with rain, which is a winner. Um, so, hope you're good. And so, just formality first, if you could just scroll down, if you're listening on podcasts, and just drop us a review, that'd be massive for me. Or just share in the video, that would be even massive as well. So thank you very much. It's gonna be a quick one this morning. Um, so just gonna talk very much about the ugly truth and, and what we're really getting at, or what I'm really getting at, is for you to understand that you cannot keep lying to yourself about your health, your fitness, your life. You know, if you, um, if you are not too fussed about that your life or the way that you live or, the, or trying to find some form of fulfillment, then what I would suggest is not even watching any more of this video. Because this really is directed at people that uh, uh, probably know that they're living the ugly life, probably know that they are like their habits are ugly, the way that they uh, perform during the day is, the way that they think. And in, in when I say ugly, I mean it's just not the way they want it. It's just like not how they pictured living their lives. So, and I get it, there's a whole host of reasons why you've got there, okay? But lying to yourself and thinking that is going to be okay is, um, is like burying your head in the sand and never coming out, all right? So I think sometimes you just need some realization or perspective about the situation that you're in and usually the ugly truth is is that we tend to always think about it it tends to always be in the back of our head when we're performing those bad habits that are dragging us back drinking emotionally eating constantly making excuses not to exercise then what tends to happen is then we end up coming back and uh you know, it's in the back of our head, but yet you almost make some f- quick term plan like, I'm gonna start Monday, I'm gonna start tomorrow, and that never fucking materializes, and you end up, um, and you end up sort of staying the same as you are. Now, it doesn't all have to be doom and gloom, but I think the first thing you have to do is stop lying to yourself, stop pretending that it's all gonna be okay, stop pretending that you are gonna do something about it and actually put some plans into place to make some changes. You know, it's hard to hear sometimes, and it definitely, you know, like the hard truth, the ugly truth, whatever the fuck you uh, wanna call it. Either way, it's not pretty. It's not, it's not easy to listen to. It's not easy for someone to be able to say something like I'm saying, and you suddenly sitting there thinking, well, that is me. That's what I'm dealing with right now. And, um, you know, I am ignoring it. I am letting it overwhelm me. I am letting it bring me down. I am letting it affect my self-esteem, my confidence. I am, it is affecting the way that I look when I look back in the mirror, you know, and you're not happy with the way that you look in the mirror and you want to change, but maybe you just don't know where to change. Maybe you just don't realize how to change. So I'll give you some ideas. So if you are sort of burying your head in your, kind of looking at yourself in the mirror and you're not happy and you know the actions that you're taking are not what you want to be doing. I think what you have to do is understand why at first you have to want to change. So, you know, you have to find some form of purpose, some reason that you want to improve. And I was talking to one of my clients in the Brotherhood the other day and we were just talking and uh, he's been going through quite a a difficult period and... um, we were talking about how we were gonna get back and stuff like that, but I sort of continued questioning why he wanted to get back. So he's going, I, I want to lose X amount of weight. Um, and I was, I was just going, why? Why do you wanna do that? And, and he's going, I, I want to be better for um, one, my wife, one, my kids. And I was going, okay, let's be more specific. Let's go exactly what we're talking about. And we knuckled it down to family. And then basically I just asked, a series of questions and all I asked was why and if you peel back the layers and you go down deep and you go at least five or six whys in you get to some real emotional areas of your life why you want to improve your life why you want to be here longer you know and I think a lot of you who are dads will end up peeling all the way back to the fact that you like being alive and that you want to be alive and condition your body so much so that when you're in a position to see your children get married or grow up or be successful or get or have children or be a granddad, you want to be healthy enough 
alive enough, should I say, to um, see all that. You know, and that strikes a chord. When you really go into it and think about it, and if the decisions that you're making right now are not setting you up for that, then in theory, in some respect, you're letting that purpose down. You know, you're not showing the attentive um, detail or, of interest that you need to for that particular subject. You're not going deep enough. You're not performing enough for that to happen. Because as you get older, you need to be making sure that you are looking after your body even more so, especially your state of mind, especially your organs, especially your heart, all of those things you need to be listening to. And that would be fucking hard to listen. That would be hard to hear. You know, you're almost letting down that purpose because you're neglecting yourself and you keep lying to yourself and you keep not putting yourself through the situation that you need to to improve the way that you lived, to reach and meet that goal. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what the fucking purpose is, what's the drive, what's the fire in the belly in the morning when you get up, you know? What's the commitment when you don't feel like working out? What's the commitment when you can see temptation of booze and, and uh, fast food and other foods that's gonna take you away, that's gonna take your calories into a massive surplus? What's the commitment that's gonna stop you doing that? It's the first thing that you have to work out. The second thing is then small wins. Lots of small wins, 24, seven, three, six, five. So a small win. First thing you have to do is get a plan. Is have some structure to your fitness. You can't suddenly say that you're gonna start a fitness plan and have no plan. I'm not gonna go to the gym. What are you gonna do at the gym? I'm gonna do this. Okay, how long are you doing it for? How many days a week are you gonna do it? How long are we going to check ourselves? How are we going to test results? You know, plan, plan, plan. What time are you going to go? How much earlier do you need to get up to do that? How much later do you need to get up to do that? Are you going to do it before work, after work? Lots of things to consider. Don't just fucking go, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get on it. Like, how are you going to get on it? Be specific. Just like you are at work. Just like you are in probably other things that you have a passion about. Go all in and focus exactly what the plan is. What's the plan over the next six to 12 weeks? How much weight do you need to lose or want to lose? Do you want to gain more energy? Do you want to be on a calorie deficit? Start tracking your foods, etc. So it's just small wins. And the smallest win could be deciding exactly what it is that you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. The second small win could be actually implementing it and starting. And then the third one could be holding yourself accountable to friends, family, social media, a coach, whatever that might be. Okay, and that's just two, and, that, and that's the small win. Purpose and starting, planning and starting. Okay, purpose, planning, start. Purpose, planning, start. That's how it starts. And then what tends to happen, and this is what tends to what's to happen when we go into the brotherhood. It starts by people coming in with an idea of what they want to do, talking to me on the phone, setting our goals together, bang, they're on the way. Following those workouts, whether it's all six rounds of the exercise that we do in the app or whether it's just two, it doesn't matter. Tracking the calories, figuring out how many calories you need a day and then working out over seven days. Then educating, so making sure that those guys know exactly what they need to be doing. And so on, and it begins, and it begins. But you cannot keep burying your head in the sand, pretending that it's going to be okay. Because you can't. You simply cannot do that forever. And I'll sort of finish off by saying, how you live your life now will determine how you live your life in 10 years. 10 years is a long time. 10 years is a long time. But the older you get, okay, the harder it becomes. And it does, it, you know, I've worked with a lot of guys late 40s and 50s who always say to me I wish that I'd start this in my late 30s early 40s good on them for starting because they're in a fantastic place now but it does get harder guys and the longer that you leave it and the keep, more you keep lying to yourself emotionally mentally the more it's going to stress it's going to become so I just I only get out here in the middle of the morning to tell you the truth and kind of be honest with you so that um you can just kind of go fucking hell. He's right, I've got to sort my shit out. 
um, and, and got to make some changes, I've got to make some plans, I've got to build some structure, and this all takes time. This all takes time, guys. Um, you know, and if you need help, that's what the Brotherhood's there for, guys. You know, we do it, we're getting fit for Christmas, that's our thing. We're going to be in massive shape for Christmas. Um, we're not doing a January hype, it's absolute bullshit. Okay, all of that crap that fucking winds me up, it's triggered me already talking about it. The I'm gonna get fit bullshit, okay? The aim is to get fit for Christmas in January is just like any other month. It's no different, you're just killing it every single month because every single month is a January. Every single month is a January when we're in the Brotherhood. We're focused, we're building structure, Okay, we're holding each other accountable, we're being inspired by each other, we're getting the kick up the arse we need from each other, and that's where it starts, you know, and that's where it starts. Um, so I'm just going to leave it there, guys. It's, it's, it, sometimes, it is difficult sometimes, I think, to do a live feed um, when you're talking about subjects like that, because it is an emotional subject for a lot of people. A lot of people are struggling out there, a lot of people are struggling, but burying their heads in the stands and, you know, and the ugly truth of it is, is that a lot of people are lying to themselves. Um, and I just want you to realise that you can't keep doing that. You can't keep doing that. And it's time to kind of like sort of set up, take notice, um, kick yourself up the backside and kind of say it's time to fucking change. Um, and on that note, I wish you a good day. I hope you have a great day, guys. Um, and I hope you make the best of the day. And I shall catch you in the morning. All the best. <laughs>